Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is December 22 and our daily review of news about Ukraine. The Ministry of Economy of Ukraine expects that the EU embargo on Russian oil and petroleum products should reduce Russia's profits in this area by at least 50 percent. That's according to Yulia Sviridenko, first deputy prime minister, minister of economy of Ukraine, who spoke at a briefing on Thursday and Ukraineform correspondent reports. We expect the collapse of profits from oil and gas exports to be at more than 50 percent, precisely because of the introduction of the EU embargo on oil and petroleum products and the introduction of price restrictions. Oil and gas account for 60 percent and 40 percent of federal budget revenues. We expect that Russia's revenues will fall below the critical level of $40 billion per quarter, Sviridenko said. Read also, Kuleba reproaches India for buying Russian oil she expressed hope that against the background of plunging profits, Russia would have to face difficulties in financing the war. As reported, the EU introduced an embargo on the import of Russian oil to the European market by sea as well as a price cap of 60 US dollars per barrel for its deliveries to third countries using European vessels or trading services. The cap has been agreed with the countries of the Group of Seven and other EU partners. After the deoccupation of Ukrainian territories in Kherson region, the police found seven torture chambers and eight places where people deprived of liberty had been held. That's according to acting chief of the Kherson region PD communications team Andriy Koveny who spoke at a briefing at the ukraine ukraine Forum Media Center. Currently, seven torture chambers and eight places of deprivation of liberty have been recorded in the deoccupied territories, three torture chambers and a place of deprivation of liberty were located directly in Kherson, another four torture chambers and seven places of deprivation of liberty were in the Beroslavsky district, Koveny said. Read also. Another mass burial site found in deoccupied areas of Kherson region according to the official, these are not all torture chambers out there, but only those discovered by the police, because investigative teams include not only police operatives, that is why other agencies also document the sites where torture chambers were located. In the regional center, the largest torture chamber had been set up in the temporary detention center, where there are more than 300 confirmed cases of detention. The victims have already been identified and are now testifying. But, as Koveny emphasized, this number is growing every day, the exact number of people who have gone through this torture chamber has not yet been established. He noted that in total, more than 8,000 criminal proceedings have been initiated into the facts of war crimes in the territory of Kherson region since the beginning of hostilities. Ukraine needs cluster munitions to inflict devastating losses on massive Russian forces on the battlefield. That's according to Dan Rice, special advisor to Ukraine Army Commander-in-Chief Valery Zaluznyi, who spoke with CNN and Ukraineform correspondent reports. I've spoken with the Joint Chiefs of Staff Edition about this, I'm constantly in touch with Ukraine about it. At this point, we have not given them any cluster munitions edition. We really need to, Dan Rice said. He noted that these munitions multiply the artillery shells by five to ten times more lethal. Read also, Patriot Systems to Protect Ukraine's Main Population Centers, Ukraine's CINC advisor Rice, instead of throwing a dart at an ant it is better to use a flamethrower against a bunch of ants, he said. This is how lethality is increased to win the war, Rice stressed, that's the game changer. At this point, the Joe Biden administration is cautious not to go against the countries that have signed the convention to ban cluster munitions, mostly Western European nations, according to Dan Rice, who added that Eastern European countries have not signed it, being aware that they, too, can one day be attacked by Russia's overwhelming force. Rice also recalled that the Russians are already using cluster munitions against Ukrainian civilians, which constitutes a war crime. We would like to give it to the Ukrainians to use it against military targets, the advisor said, adding that Ukraine will be sending special teams, once the Russian forces are pushed back, to clean up the affected areas from unexploded ordnance. Dan Rice emphasized that besides a range of defensive weapons Ukraine is already getting from partners, they also need offensive capabilities to effectively expel the Russians from the country. 
These include an armored force, tanks, and armored fighting vehicles, in large amounts, Rice explained. The Ukrainian military will quickly learn how to operate Patriot air defense systems, which are included in the new U.S. security assistance package, to Ukraine. Minister of Defense of Ukraine Alexei Reznikov made a relevant statement following a phone call with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin III. Had a phone call with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin III. Grateful for another package of security assistance, especially for the new capabilities to defend our skies from Russia's brutal attacks. Ukrainian patriotic soldiers will master these systems quickly. They proved their skills many times, Reznikov posted on Twitter. Read also, Patriot Systems to Protect Ukraine's Main Population Centers Ukraine's CINC advisor Rice yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced that Patriot Systems were included in a $1.85 billion security assistance package to Ukraine. OL. On Thursday, December 22, the Russian troops struck the town of Chase of Yar in Donetsk region with MLRS, killing a civilian and injuring two more. Chase of Yar, Donetsk region. The enemy used multiple launch rocket systems to attack the town. One person was killed, two more were injured, deputy head of the president's office Kirillo Tymoshenko posted on Telegram. Apartment blocks were damaged by enemy fire. Emergency services are on site. Read also, school, houses, power lines damaged in Russian shelling of Donetsk region as reported, on December 22, the Russians fired artillery at the village of Stanislav, Kherson region, injuring a civilian and damaging power lines, gas pipelines, and houses. OL. The Russians take Ukrainian POWs out of the places of detention allegedly for exchange and then return them to penal facilities, claiming that Ukraine refuses to exchange them. Ukraine considers it a form of torture. Ukrainian prisoners are sometimes deliberately taken out allegedly for exchange and then returned to a penal facility and told that Ukraine refuses to exchange them. We consider it a form of torture. We emphasize that Ukraine has not rejected a single person offered by the Russian side for exchange, Dmitry Lubinets, the Ukrainian Parliament Commissioner for Human Rights, posted on Telegram. In addition, Lubinets informed that Ukraine constantly raises the issue of the treatment of our prisoners at the international level. Read also, Ombudsman, currently no prospects for all for all prisoner swap as Russia is against it thanks to this pressure detention conditions have recently improved. Those returning from captivity confirm this. The coordination headquarters works to return every Ukrainian home, he said. OL. Humanitarian coordinator for Ukraine Denise Brown announced the release of an additional US $20 million from the Ukraine Humanitarian Fund, UHF, to support more than 300 civil society organizations community-based organizations, and volunteer groups that have been supporting people impacted by the war in Ukraine. This is noted in the statement by the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA. These groups have always been the backbone of the humanitarian response in Ukraine and even more since the war started in late February. They are in the front line, taking risks to make sure people whose lives have been torn apart by months of war receive support for their daily needs, water, food, medicines, shelter when their houses have been damaged, explained humanitarian coordinator for Ukraine, Denise Brown. As noted, the humanitarian community in Ukraine has had several meetings with these groups in different parts of the country. Brown noted that the work they are doing is impressive. However, 10 months later, their resources are being exhausted and they need support to sustain their vital assistance to the people of Ukraine, she added. Read also, U.S. provides more than $374 million in additional humanitarian aid for Ukraine with this new disbursement, OCHA managed humanitarian funds will have allocated over $252 million for life-saving operations in Ukraine since the Russian Federation's invasion started on February 24 including $192 million from the UHF and $60 million from the Central Emergency Response Fund, SURF, reads the statement. 
Ocha notes that more than $55 million has been channeled to projects and organizations supporting hospitals, displacement centers, and other critical facilities with generators and people with winter supplies, as Ukraine faces a severe energy crisis in the middle of the winter. OL. As part of the Grain Initiative, five ships carrying 221,000 tons of agricultural products for Asia and Europe left the ports of Odessa region over the past two days. Grain Initiative, five ships carrying 221,000 tons of agricultural products bound for Asia and Europe left the ports of Odessa region over the past two days, the Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine informs. In particular, Sea Bridal Bulk Carrier is loaded with 25,000 tons of agricultural products bound for Libya. In total, 12 ships with 305,000 tons of Ukrainian grain have been sent to this African country since the start of the Grain Corridor operation. According to the Ministry of Infrastructure, 29 ships are currently being processed in the ports of Odessa region. More than 1 million tons of agricultural products are loaded onto them. In addition, two ships with 89,000 tons of agricultural products are moving along the grain corridor. As noted, 92 vessels are waiting for inspection in the Bosphorus. Yesterday, seven ships were permitted to move further. The Ministry of Infrastructure notes that at least 12 inspections per day are required for continuous movement along the grain corridor. In total, from August 1, 574 ships left the ports of Odessa region, carrying 14.6 million tons of Ukrainian foodstuffs to the countries of Asia, Europe, and Africa. As reported, from December 12 to 18, 514,800 tons of agricultural products were exported along the grain corridor through the seaports of Odessa region, down 22% compared to the previous week. In Istanbul on November 17, Ukraine, the United Nations, and Turkey agreed to extend the initiative for the safe transportation of agricultural products across the Black Sea for another 120 days. It started working on July 22, and the first ship with Ukrainian foodstuffs left the port of Odessa on August 1. Photo, Ministry of Infrastructure, OL. In Donetsk region, a school, residential buildings, and power lines were damaged in Russian shelling over the past day. Yesterday in the afternoon, the Russians launched a rocket attack on Pokrovsk, hitting the territory of an enterprise. Fortunately, there were no casualties or destructions. Artillery shelling of Volodar continues in Volnavaka direction, three houses were damaged, no one was injured, Pavlo Kirilenko, head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration, posted on Telegram. In Horlivka direction, a person was injured and a house was damaged as a result of an enemy attack. Power lines were damaged in Chasevyar community, and a school was damaged in Koshchentinivka in the enemy shelling. OL. Today we were talking about those news. Ukraine hopes oil embargo to have Russian profit. In deoccupied Kherson region, police discovered seven torture chambers. Cluster munitions could become game-changer if provided to Ukraine, CINC advisor. Reznikov, Ukrainian military will master Patriot systems quickly. Russian army hits chase of Yar in Donetsk region, killing civilian. Lubinets, Russians invent new type of psychological torture for captive Ukrainians. UN Humanitarian Coordinator allocates $20 million to support Ukrainian volunteers. Five ships with agricultural products left Ukrainian ports in past two days. School, houses, power lines damaged in Russian shelling of Donetsk region.